Why do people fail the ICA examination? Why does it appear that many people walk into the exam hall without knowing what to expect and end up failing the exam woefully? Why has it become a challenge for many people to become chartered accountants, although there are ways that they are supposed to go through in order for them to pass this exam with ease? I have been teaching subjects in the ICHE, ACCA, ICAEW over the last decade, and I have come across people from many walks of life with different mindsets, attitudes. I've seen people who come and within the shortest possible time, the first exam they write, boom, they pass. The second time, boom, they pass and they are out. I have seen people come and the first time they don't pass, the second time they pass the examination. I've seen people who come, they write it the first time they don't pass, second time they don't pass, third time they pass. And I've seen people who come and then they write the exam one, two, three, and boom, they give up and go and do something else. It means that they've given up on their professional qualification program on the ICA, ACCA, and they go and do something else because they conclude that, hey, this is not for me. I don't know which category you belong, but the question we need to ask ourselves is, why is it that some people pass the exam and why do some people fail? On the podcast today, I want to share with you three key issues that I think are the challenges that hinders the progress of many people in their pursuit of becoming chartered accountants and also share with you some strategies on how you can deal with them so that you can put yourself in the position to be able to walk into the exam or write the exam with confidence but most importantly pass the examination. The first thing is the mindset. If you're a follower of my work, this is something that I've said over and over again. Because as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Many people approach the professional qualification examination as though it is their first degree, is their MBA, M MSc, or some certificate programs they did somewhere. I am not by this throwing shades or disrespecting any first degree MBA or HND program from any school. But you need to understand that this is a professional qualification examination. Unlike your degree, your MBA, your MSc program, where marks are spread across your project works, assignments, uh, internal assessments, and the final end of semester examination, in the professional qualification program, you have just three hours and that is all. So the mindset required for the professional qualification examination has to be different from the degree program or your MBA program because in three hours, it is done. Some people feel that, yeah, no matter what you do in the ICA examination, they will fail you. And always when I hear people sheepishly saying that, I kind of wonder what is going on in their brain as they are altering such words. Because if you say that no matter what you do in the ICA examination, you're going to fail, why are you saying that? Because the exam that you failed, some people passed. The exam that you failed, someone was awarded the best graduating student or the best students for that semester. The exam that he said was difficult, someone scored the highest marks. So why is it that you are not able to score that marks? Why is it that you are not able to pass? Is it that they have two brains? Is it that they have 16 eyes? Is it that they are better than you? No, it is the mindset. So people are like, yeah, no matter what you do, you're going to fail the examination. It is not like that. There is nobody sitting at the ICAG on the ICAG examination committee whose goal is to fail people. They, oh, it, you see, sometimes, you know, and this is where sometimes I go a little bit off and then I let people understand the reality of life. Number one, your life is not that consequential to warrant that somebody will sit down to sabotage your life. In case you don't know, nobody is interested in failing you. It is what you wrote that you get. So if you go, your results comes and you get 25, 35, 6, 3, 10, 15. That's what you wrote. Nobody is in the ICA or sitting at the ICA seeking to fail you. So that mindset, we have to get rid of it. So your mindset is key. This is a professional qualification examination. There are people who think, yeah, they can sit down two weeks to the exam, a week to the exam and start studying and miraculously they should be able to pass the examination. No, you're going to fail the exam. You cannot. 
Just sit down two weeks to the exam. Think that you can solve some past questions and go and pass the examination. You will fail the exam. I tell people that, you see, the IC examination now has reached that pinnacle, has reached that level where you are rewarded for understanding the material and not necessarily about the questions you have solved. So if you are somebody who wants to solve questions from 2019 up until 2024, I don't care. You can go ahead, but there is nothing in there that will be valid for you going into the future. There is nothing in there. So some people think, yeah, they can sit down two weeks to the exam, a week to the exam, then they will solve all manner of past questions. You will fail. Let's say you're writing strategy case study. You think solving the past questions from the strategy case study previous exams will help you to be able to go and write the exam? I tell students this. If you're looking at the past questions, look at the past questions to understand the structure of the exams. The context of the questions, the way the examiner structure the questions and the various verbs and terminologies that the examiner is using. Not, necess not that you are solving it so that you go to the exam or you see something similar like that. 99.999% of the time, there is nothing similar. So this mindset of, yeah, I see it, no matter what you do, you're going to fail the examination. We must get rid of it. This mindset that, yeah, I can sit down two weeks to the exam, a week to the exam, I'll do some shabo shabo work. We have to get rid of it. Why? Because it is a professional qualification examination. Unlike your first degree, your HND, your MBA, your MSc, or whatever the heck it is that you did, where marks are going to be spread across assignment, internal assessment, uh, project works, and then end of semester, here it is three hours. And your destiny literally is determined within three hours. And how do you excel in that three hours? It's having the ability to prepare for the examination, understand the material in the syllabus so that you can go in there, answer the questions and pass the examination. So that is the first thing, mindset. People have the wrong mindset about the ICAG professional qualification program. So if you want to pass the examination, I want you to rewind your brain. Don't listen to the things that people are saying that, hey, no matter what you do, you're going to fail the exam. No, some people passed. No matter what you do, ICA will fail you. No, somebody was awarded the best graduating student, the overall best student. So don't listen to naysayers. Don't listen to people who are lazy, who don't like studying. Yes, don't wait two weeks to the exam. Take some miserable leave from your company, cause financial loss to your company, and then think you can miraculously use two weeks to be able to pass the examination. It's not going to work. So if you want to pass the examination, you have to rewind your brain. Understand that this is a professional qualification examination. It means that it is going to require a lot of work, a lot of dedication. You must understand the structure of the syllabus. You must solve questions outside the ICAG past questions to position yourself to have an understanding of how the examination is going to be. And most importantly, how you can mentally position yourself to go into the exam hall, write the exam with confidence and pass the examination. So you want to pass the ICE examination this semester? I want you to work on your mindset. Have a positive mindset and understand that it's a professional qualification examination and you have to spread your work weekly. If you do this, I can guarantee you, you will write the exam in one attempt and boom, pass the examination. Or maybe your second time, you will go in there, write the exam with confidence and pass the examination.